looking forward, we're excited about some of the new hardware devices that are coming on the market. Um, in particular, the thing that excites me from a, a usability point of view are the air-gapped QR code based devices where you know, you're not even going to have a USB cable to have to plug them into anything, but rather there's a camera built into the device and it, all of the data gets exchanged back and forth um, via a QR code standard. Uh, it, it appears that we have landed on the uh, blockchain commons um, standard for animated QR codes. They have a, a 1.0 and a 2.0 version. The 2.0 2 version is much more performant. And I'm hoping to see uh, all of these hardware manufacturers essentially add support for that. So when I talk about uh, these devices, some examples are uh, Keystone, formerly known as Kobo, uh, Blockstream Jade, um, and Foundation, I think are, are three of the, the first ones that are coming out now. Uh, a downside I think that we're seeing is that be because these devices have more hardware, they're going to tend to be more expensive, at least early on. So some people may be a bit off put by the higher price point on some of them, though I think Blockstream Jade is, is quite inexpensive. But um, I think that this is going to really be like the next step forward in uh, you know, air-gapped private key management and so we're looking forward to being able to support as many of those devices as possible with CASA because one of the bigger pain points that our clients experience is having to uh, plug in a, a device to their computer and uh, do the signing there because it's basically a lot of complexity. Uh, you know, different operating systems, different browsers, different network settings. There's just so many things that can go wrong when you have to plug the device into the computer. Um, we feel like being able to get rid of the computer uh, completely will make uh, the user experience a lot more seamless and it'll, it'll make our support load a lot lower. Uh, looking forward more to next year, uh, that's when we're thinking about things like Taproot support, thinking about possible, you know, more complex type of Bitcoin scripting. I think one of the, the common examples that I give is something like a, a gracefully degrading time-locked multi-sig where if so many years go by, uh, the threshold requirements for spending from it will decrease. This is Theoretically, it's doable today, but Taproot will make it much more private, much more uh, performant because you won't have to reveal those scripts unless you actually use them. However, there's a number of trade-offs because you end up creating uh, redeem scripts that have non-deterministic data in them. And whenever you start doing that, that means your, uh, your backups are, are going to have to be essentially refreshed you know, every time you generate a new address. So I think there's still a fair amount of work and perhaps some new standards that will need to be formed around that. Like, you know, everyone's excited about Taproot and being able to create more complex scripts. But I gave a talk at uh, the MIT Bitcoin conference actually last year where I was warning that we, we need to be careful as developers not to backslide and not to uh, throw out all the cool stuff about having deterministic wallet backups just so that we can have uh, fancier type of Bitcoin scripts. So still, uh, I think a fair amount of work to be done even at the, the protocol and sort of wallet standards level for that stuff. It's a two part question. Uh, I guess it's the first part is, I'd really appreciate if you could just give like a, a really quick summary of what, 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 what you do basically and what, what the product is. So obviously people out there listening can understand that and maybe if they're interested, check it out. Um, and then the second part of my question um, was, I guess, where did the idea come from? Like what sparked the idea in, in you, I guess, to, to go ahead and work on it? basically as a project. Yeah, so the very short version of CASA is that we help people secure their Bitcoin. And really we're what we're focused on is people 
who have a significant amount of Bitcoin. So we are aiming to provide a level of both uh, security and redundancy and robustness, not only against attacks, but against all forms of loss. Because to, to be quite honest, even, even though I think what you, you probably hear about in the space is various thefts or uh, criminality, the majority of times when people lose their Bitcoin, it's because of their own mistakes and simply just losing the keys due to uh, ignorance or a natural disaster or, or what have you. And so what we've built at Casa is a system that it's, um, its main goal is to eliminate single points of failure so that you can't shoot yourself in the foot and make one mistake and have that one mistake be catastrophic uh, for your Bitcoin holdings. The way that we do that is with multi-signature technology, which means that when you deposit your Bitcoin into your Casa setup, uh, you cannot spend it with a single signature. Uh, we, we have multiple different uh, setups with different levels of security. Some of them require two signatures, some require three. And then the, the key set is distributed as well geographically so that you know if your house burns down you don't lose all your keys uh really you should be having your keys in uh multiple different places uh, we recommend like home or office or safety deposit box uh, for our our premium tier customers uh, that generally have a three out of five key set then uh, they'll have one key on their phone and three different hardware devices of different manufacturers so that you're not creating a single point of failure with supply chains or uh, software or hardware. And then all of those will be in different uh, secure locations that are as far apart as you want. Uh, there's a fair amount of flexibility and customization that can come into play. Um, you know, it's, it's all about trade-offs between security and convenience here. And then uh, finally, CASA will hold one key offline, which we then have our own uh, recovery procedures for. If you want to request a signature from CASA, you'll have to hop through various types of authentication, uh, depending on what type of client you are. But the whole idea here is that if you lose one of your keys, it's fine you still have a threshold of keys in other places that you can use to spend those funds and then perform a key rotation, like I said, where you just go buy another device and uh, plug it in and essentially reconstitute uh, your key set. So that's just like a really high level, um, but we do a lot more than just provide the software. We're also really high service level uh, components. So especially at our premium tiers, like we'll actually get on the phone with our clients and walk them through things. Uh, we even have uh, emergency phone call support, emergency like big red button in the app if you want to lock everything down and you think something has gone wrong. Um, and it's really about peace of mind, I guess, from a, uh, a sales standpoint, the people who come to us are the people who have a lot to lose. And they, in many cases, don't feel comfortable with the really high learning curve of setting up your own key management system. Now, this is the beauty of Bitcoin is that no one can stop you. you you're, you're free to do everything yourself. And, um, essentially recreate the same type of setup. Uh, but I would argue that we've made things uh, very streamlined and it's, it's possible for a novice to come in and essentially get onboarded in a number of hours, uh, even if they're not familiar with the uh, Bitcoin multi-sig or not familiar with different Bitcoin hardware devices. So I, I think that this is a necessary requirement in order for Bitcoin to really go mainstream and do it in a way that is not you know, recreating the banking system where everybody is keeping their money on third party custodians and exchanges that uh, for me to help people help themselves is a way for me to actually strengthen the ecosystem as a whole to help reduce the systemic risk of too much concentration of Bitcoin in the few hands. So 
it is, you know, is a, is a personal mission, I think, for me to try to help protect the whole system by helping individuals empower themselves. And it's also, it was spurred on by a personal need where I had been working at BitGo for three years doing multi-sig um, enterprise private key management, you know, helping secure exchanges and other large providers. And I realized that my own cold storage setup was just really onerous. And I was spending essentially a weekend every year updating my cold storage. And I felt like, you know, if I'm supposed to be the expert and it takes me this much time to do it right, or at least uh, to follow the best practices that I consider to be important if you're trying to secure large amount of uh, funds, then I felt like the vast majority of people were not going to be uh, able to go to that length. And so helping lower the bar uh, of requirements, uh, helping kind of get the, the, the steepness of the learning curve uh, a bit flatter is, is really just going to be good for everyone. And you know, if we can... If we can you know, run a profitable business while we're doing that, then great. But in, even if not, then it's going to be helpful for the ecosystem as a whole. I got you. I appreciate it. Um, so it kind of yeah, it came from fixing a problem that you kind of foresaw for yourself or something that was, you know, a pain point or a frustration. And then I'm realizing, well, obviously that probably impacts a lot of other people or will do anyway. So building that out for them and offering that as a product. That's pretty cool. I appreciate the answer. Um, well, I guess we've been going for about, an hour approximately as well um i don't know ricardo did you have anything else you wanted to ask um no no i'm good thank you for uh participating in the interview though jameson yeah really appreciate your time and uh and also some of your answers you've like kind of brought light to quite a few things i've i've had i've wondered um so i really appreciate it you bet thanks for having me and also thanks to everyone out there listening um and yeah if they have any questions obviously feel free to send them through to myself or ricardo or a bit refilm we can always uh, try and pass them on to Jameson or answer ourselves. But um, yeah, I appreciate, uh, appreciate everyone. And uh, everyone have a lovely day, evening, morning, afternoon, week, whatever it is where you are. Take care and buy Bitcoin.